Hello, all. It's me, a short, bald man with bad teeth and a terrible work schedule doingness uh, and ability with language of English. Uh, this time I'm talking about heaven, uh, mainly because the real content takes uh, a bit longer and, uh, you know, for your entertainment pleasure and uh, also because I get bored, uh, I guess. And for the money, the hot YouTube money. <sighs> Up for it. When I was about 19, uh, I travelled around northern India, mostly Rajasthan, um, looking for uranium. Not your enriched uranium, uh, just, just normal uranium, I would enrich it myself. I had an idea to build a massive tokamak in my backyard, and I would have done it too if I had found the uranium, or industrially produced magnets, or what some engineers, or some funding. But I did come close if you discount all of those things. It was really four and a half million litres of water an hour that, you know, I just couldn't get that. That was the main thing. Heaven. Yeah. So anyway, there's a place west of Agra, where the Taj Mahal is, uh, called Fatipur Sikri. And it's a tourist attraction now. It was founded and abandoned by the Mughals. It's like a fort and a, a town. And uh, I thought maybe there's some uranium there. So I went there uh, and I found uh, a tour guide to take me around. His name was Mohammed, uh, and sort of got chatting and uh, being a, a bit deceitful, I told him I was a Methodist. Definitely in my experience, uh, it's a lot easier to say, you know, I'm a Methodist and sort of give a vague idea of what that is than uh, the truth, which is, well, I don't, I don't really believe in God, but I definitely don't believe in a God that appears in religious texts just seems really unlikely you know and then get into all of that I'm like what you know what do you mean you don't believe in a god at all like well actually i do i believe in many i believe in zeus jupiter that's my dude uh i was about 15 16 and i watched the um the older boys the on the upper end of high school like 18 19 uh doing um like old school like greco wrestling and i remember watching that and realizing like having a godly moment and being like, I'm Greek. And I love olive oil, right? That's, you know, no one else in my family likes olive oil. So I just think I'm naturally, my religion is Greek. How many people can I offend in this one? And uh, I told him that and he, he liked that. So he starts opening up a bit and telling me about Islam and, you know, superficial stuff, but it's nice. And... Uh, gets to the end of the tour and says, you know, it's Friday. Do you want to have a quick pray at the Fatipur Sikri Mosque, open air mosque? And I think to myself, I would love to have a quick pray. I can't wait to go back through Heathrow security and tell them about that. So yeah, so I go to um, the, the mosque, this big open air mosque, and, um, you know, like wash my hands and put on a little plastic hat and all of that. And uh, it's baking as well, like you're, everyone's barefoot and it's on, like, I think paving slabs or something. It's very hot and, like, I'm doing all this praying and Mohammed is next to me going, uh, yeah, yeah, take it easy, take it easy. But there are fundamentalists watching, so get it right. And what that means is, like, bowing really low at the right time. And if you've ever seen Muslims bowing, I don't think it comes across, like, how physically strenuous that is if you're not used to it. It is not a particularly natural posture it was like fairly painful um and then you know he's trying to tell me he's trying to keep up with the preacher but also keep it quiet and sort of telling me what the dude is saying you know stuff about you know islam or whatever and then and then he starts going on about uh heaven and it's like, okay i know a bit okay yeah i can imagine heaven bill and ted and death and all of that, and he says, uh, yeah, so, so in heaven, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then imagine your heaven. What does heaven mean to you? And um, don't get me wrong, praying with the Muslims for like half an hour at Fatipur Sikri was by far 
the least boring religious experience I've had. Uh, Hindu, Jew, Catholic, Protestant. Boring. But it was boring, so I kind of zoned out, and I guess if I was a different person, I'd have thought I'd had a religious experience, but I definitely didn't. And I started to imagine my heaven. And it goes a bit like this. So the way I imagine it is I don't even realise I've died until I've got there, and, you know, all the sort of smoke disappears. And the first thing I see is an enormous uh, electronic billboard, um, and it's got all of my statistics on it. You know, you've walked seven million steps, you've produced 50 tons of garbage, you've caused seven traffic accidents, you've had 17 different types of sinus infections, stuff like that. And sort of like looking at it and realizing, oh, I'm dead. Especially with a statistic that says percentage of people who've died in the same manner you have. You know, like 2% died from heat stroke praying at Fatip or Sikri or whatever. Um, I mean, imagine if 2% of the world's population died praying in that particular mosque from heat stroke. Being a cool, humble guy, I'm the sort of person who's not going to make it to 50. I'm thinking about 45 is when I'm going to pop my clogs. And I'm thinking it's going to be... Um, complications. Indirect complications from alcohol abuse. Self-fulfilling prophecy. No, but, 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 but you look into it and actually I died in a lawnmower accident. It's just that I was drunk. They put that down there. And then someone comes along with a folder and it's got all the what-if statistics. If you'd have been born 70 years later, this is how much it would have cost you in oxygen consumed. Uh, if you'd have been born in 14th century Constantinople, these are all the crimes you would have committed and gotten away with. Did you know that you're actually the 15th great-great-grandnephew of Haile Selassie? Things like that. And also, if you'd lived a bit longer, if you hadn't died in that lawnmower accident, this is how you would have died. And I imagine it would all be stuff like, you know, I would have died, I did die at, let's say, 43 from the lawnmower accident, but if I'd have lived, if I hadn't done that, if I'd have stayed in bed that day at 45, uh, installing a TV. That's all it says. 47, drowned in an empty pool. What does that even mean? Yeah, and then 50, just cancer. And that's it, that's the cutoff. You're gonna die of that was the fucking kill switch, was 50. So, good on you for dying in a funny way, I suppose. You know, I want to die, right, what I want to die, either back in the back of an ambulance or on a stretcher while they're taking me to an ambulance, but like the dudes are just looking at me like there's no point. Like my, my guts are hanging out and there's like lawnmower rotor blades like in, in various vital organs. I want to die like that. I don't want to die with a tube up my nose. I want to die with like metal like penetrating my spleen. So I can quit like my last, the last thing I want to do is go. That's what my spinal fluid tastes like. Who's done that? Mmm. So a unique experience in my final moments. Like I'm dying there and I've got like 10, 30 minutes to live. And like quickly say to someone like, Damien, Damien. Try and get me some heroin. I've never done it before, why not? Mm. You, you, paramedic, bring over your phone. Right. I've never, I, I couldn't bring myself to do it before. Two girls, one octopus, put it on. Right, it's on X videos, I can give you the URL. But anyway, I have questions. So I assume there would be some sort of, you know, uh, waiting list or, or at least a queue uh, to see God, I would assume a lot of people would want to see God, and you know. Uh, but no, uh, I can go right right to see him, you know, so I end up going um, all the way across town, across heaven, uh, to God's house, massive massive house, like completely overgrown everywhere. Uh, go through, I assume it's all instant, so I don't have to wait. Go through the gate, uh, raw iron gate, could do with a bit of WD-40 on that. Uh, through the doors, they're really impressive, but they seem better days. And then I'm in this like enormous, I suppose, what, what would you call it? Like a lobby with a big creaky um, staircase, not a spiral one, but you know, like one of those ones you could imagine Lindsey Graham walking down in a massive ball gown. Uh, and I'm looking around and all I can see suddenly on the end of this Lindsey Graham staircase 
is an enormous parrot. It's a parrot. I can see that it's just a parrot. It's not like a exotic pterodactyl or something, but it's just a parrot. And this parrot goes like that and goes, poor parrot. And then just looks and then does it again. Poor parrot. So I'm looking at this parrot and I'm thinking, is this God? I'm looking around and there's just newspapers everywhere. Like old newspapers and like bits of newspapers, like the, the inserts of newspapers. Uh, just like strewn about with like coffee rings everywhere and like half done crosswords and stuff. And then this dude in tennis gear comes down, right? And he's got like the face of Willem Dafoe, but the body of an athlete. Limford Christie. Uh, and he comes down and I'm like, are you God? And he's like, no. Come with me, I'll take you to God. Right? Walk on up. And then walk down this long corridor full of mattresses. And then finally get into like God's room in God's house. And this, it's this enormous like Edward Scissorhands-esque attic room with ceiling to... Uh, ceiling? to floor windows, that's right, I thought the ceiling was at the bottom. Ceiling to floor windows. And I look, and there's just one person in it. And he's sitting, shut up. He's sitting on uh, like a Louis XIV like love seat, like gilded love seat. And it's all like, all the gold is like peeling off it. And it's all like threadbare in places. Like he's been sitting on it for fucking centuries. And he's like looking at this glass table like covered in tiny screws. And he's like really focusing on this screw, on these screws. And I, I'm looking at this guy like, I know who this is, who is this? And I look and he's, his brow's really furrowed and he looks like very focused and kind of pretty sad. And then he looks at me and his face changes and it's Vincent Price. And I'm like, are you Vincent Price? And he goes, what? And I said, are you Vincent Price? And he goes, no. I go, are you God? He goes, yeah. So you're God? And he explains that, yeah, he's God. And I say, well, Vincent Price, why do you let all these bad things happen? And he explains that he's potent, but om not omnipotent. Uh, he doesn't know where he came from either. There's the world, and, you know, when he came along, there was the world, and... You know, I ask him, well, why do you let bad things happen? And he says, well, actually, I'm doing things all the time. I've got dozens of people on Earth right now raising money for the Romney Foundation. And I said, what? And he said, you know, helping things. You just don't hear about the things that I do and the bad things that I stop because of the liberal media. And I said, what? And he said, you just don't hear about them because of survivorship bias. I'm doing things all the time, like fucking Captain Marvel. I'm a bit here, I'm a bit here. It's like I'm a, a cross between Captain Marvel and Squidly Diddly. Finger here, finger there, stopping Carillion battle cruisers and super fucking aids over here, right? And yes, a lot of things do get through the net, but you know, I'm only God. Well, okay, Vincent Price, fair enough. No need to get all defensive. But he just smiles and shrugs like Vincent Price, and I feel very safe. But also a bit creeped out, but more safe than that. God, it turns out, does not have many answers because this is all just fantasy and I don't have any answers either. Uh, so I like the idea that in my heaven everybody gets into heaven uh, but also that doesn't really logically make sense without people sort of being reprogrammed does it? So I like the idea of Bob Ross playing Saint Peter uh, sort of standing at the entrance to heaven you know at the top of the escalator and just like putting his thumb on people's heads as they get in you know, like Hitler comes up and like, and Hitler goes, oh, oh, I'm, oh, I'm, so, oh, I'm so embarrassed and also gay. And his dad there going, yeah, mein Konibschen, it's okay. I was such a bad daddy and all that, uh, you know. So, so would it, would it be like that? Like people sort of become different people, like all their bullshit disappears and they almost become robots in heaven so they can enjoy it? Or, or would it be like more your own personal heaven, like a bubble and all the people are actually really just props? And I, I guess I went with this uh, because I, 
I, I don't know, I do like the other idea of, you know, talking to freaking Mozart, who can now hear, and Mozart saying, yeah, actually, I don't like music at all. I just watch Twitch all day and wank. Also, I just realized, sorry, uh, I do know a lot about music. It's actually Beeth Oven who's, who's deaf. Uh, so I meet him and he's, and what he, cause he, he's got someone guiding him around, like a uh, hearing human for him, right? And he's a lot bigger in real life. I mean, he must be the size of a bear. Do babies grow up in heaven? Uh, do old people, can they be younger? Um, you know, what, what about sort of contrasting people's heaven? Like in Mark Twain's Captain Stormfield, Stromfield, a, a woman has a baby, the baby dies, then the woman goes to heaven 20 years later. The woman wants to see a baby, but the baby wanted to be a grown-up. Ooh, how can that coexist and then both be in heaven? Or is heaven not just like that? And it is an afterlife, but people are like, oh, this fucking sucks. That would make more sense. Uh, but no, I like the idea that Bob Ross is there stamping people's heads and like people who are expecting to come into fucking racist heaven on their own white island uh, get there and like there's loads of black people here Bob Ross is like no problem and like, oh I don't mind it all now I'm not a racist at all now fantastic yeah uh, and I like the idea as well of going up to Bob Ross and saying how do you do that Bob Ross and Bob Ross saying what is the most motivating human feeling after greed and me going, I don't know, Bob Ross. And Bob Ross going, fear. Great. Well, I'll have my own personal heaven then. And then I get there, and it's this, this nice sort of middle upper middle class uh, cul-de-sac. There's a bit of a bend. Uh, somewhere I could never afford, but not really rich people's stuff. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't look at it from space and be like, bomb that. Uh, so, you know, kind of nice, very, very green. Uh, it's got a little bit of a sort of mini lake brook thing going on. And I'm there, and I don't know anyone, but everyone seems to know me. And then no one seems to mind that I'm wearing a white flannel suit. Um, so I'm walking around, and this is my heaven, is it? And sort of the young neighbor next door waves, and I see her with her boyfriend, and... They look really happy, that's nice, and, you know, is that, hello Madge, yeah? Okay, so I'm beginning to remember her. Well, I better go to the bar to find out what's going on. And then I go there, and it's empty, because it's the middle of the day, and it's these two old men who were just arguing about cricket. And I realize that not only am I in Australia, Australia, I'm in Neighbours, circa 2001. And as I'm praying there at the Fetipur Sikri Mosque, I realize that the best idea of heaven I can come up with is fucking Neighbours, a soap opera from Australia. So after the whole uh, the praying ended, uh, a number of uh, people there who'd prayed came up to me and asked me uh, what I thought, if I felt anything, and I said, yeah, I felt great, it was really good. And they, they liked that answer. Um, and I'm glad I didn't tell them the truth, which was that after mulling heaven, I'd rather die than go to heaven. I didn't think they'd appreciate the death clock reference, so, you know. That's the important thing about comedy, isn't it? Knowing your audience. You know, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I'm really happy that Hitler has found love with Lindsey Graham in heaven. I'll see you next time, possibly perchance, perchance to dream. Patreon, ring the bell. Bye-bye. Not a bumblebee.